Hi, my name is Thomas. I am 43 years of age. I live in Munich with my wife and our two teenage children. I grew up in a small town some distance from Munich and continue to be in touch with my parents and my older brother who also lives in this part of the country. Barring some minor illnesses, I have always been healthy. About two years ago, my life changed dramatically. I was suddenly overcome with a sense of discomfort and irritation and started to feel desperate for no reason at all. I lost interest in everything around me, which made my days absolutely unbearable. The most ordinary interactions with my family turned into huge problems, making me completely lose my temper at times. My nights were equally miserable. If I woke up early, which was frequently the case, I couldn't go back to sleep and would brood endlessly over things. I was perpetually tired and lethargic. Even good news couldn't make me happy anymore. Finally, my wife urged me to see a doctor, which I did and found out that I was depressed. I had never heard anyone say that about me before. The doctor explained to me that depression is a common disorder and often comes in episodes. Pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy are the mainstays of treatment. Unfortunately, these therapies take weeks to be effective. And sometimes they do not work at all, which was exactly what happened in my case. Despite various treatment strategies consistent with medication and psychotherapy, my symptoms not only did not improve, but they got even worse. I was completely engulfed with apathy and felt joyless and empty. From that point on, depression followed me like a demon. Finally, I went to see the doctor again. When he realized how desperate my situation was, he suggested escalating the therapeutic procedure, mentioning, for the first time, electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. I had never heard about this treatment before and requested further information. He explained that ECT is a modern, well-proven and effective medical intervention. It is applied in a safe setting and lasts about 15 minutes. With the collaboration of a psychiatrist and an anesthesiologist, the patient receives a short-acting anesthetic and a muscle relaxant. When asleep, the head is stimulated for a few seconds with short electrical impulses via electrodes on the scalp, resulting in a generalized seizure of the brain. Due to the muscle relaxant, the body's muscles do not contract. After about one minute, the seizure is terminated autonomously by the brain. Some five minutes later, the patient wakes up again and is brought back to the ward. He has breakfast and then participates in daily activities with other patients. If the therapy is applied several times at intervals of days, it leads to a significant improvement or even complete regression of the symptoms. According to the doctor, while ECT works for most patients, it may not work for all like any other medical treatment. To be honest, I was quite shocked and frightened by what I heard about the procedure, which also seemed utterly paradoxical given that, in my mind, seizure is a symptom of illness like epilepsy and by no means a therapy. However, the psychiatrist argued that in medicine, seemingly harmful measures can have a healing effect when applied under controlled conditions. 
This is true, for example, of sleep deprivation or therapy with plant poisons, such as that of foxglove. Similarly, if induced under controlled and safe conditions, generalized seizures can have positive effects on deceased brain tissue. I was also told that the clinical improvement results from the seizure, not from the electrical impulses initiating it. And that studies have shown that generalized seizures induce neurotrophic processes with neurotransmitters and hormones in the brain stimulating the regeneration of nerve tissue. The increase in brain cells and additional synapses then facilitate neuronal connections. As a result, brain regions previously restricted by the disease are restored and can resume their function. This ECT-aided recovery of structure and function creates the biological basis for the patient's clinical improvement. Not only that, the new positive perception, experience and cognition override the negative pondering during depression. This step in the healing process is an important one. I learned that, in order to ensure this aspect of the treatment, ECT patients need the same concomitant therapies such as psychotherapy, ergotherapy, social casework, and pharmacotherapy as other patients do. While all this made sense to me, I was still frightened by the potential side effects. The psychiatrist argued that ECT is a very safe treatment with rather benign side effects, which of course is not to say that the therapy is entirely harmless. Therefore, the potential negative consequences need to be weighed against the discomfort caused by the current disease. Approximately 1 in 30,000 treatments can lead to complications ranging from severe to life-threatening, which is roughly equal to the risk of brief anesthesia itself without ECT. Apparently, some patients suffer from temporary learning or memory disorders during the treatment. Although this sounded quite terrifying to me, I was told that, first of all, ECT generally helps improve patients' cognition. It might seem counterintuitive, but when ECT is successful, it actually reduces cognitive deficits, which are a common symptom of depression. Second, the cognitive side effects usually subside within a few days or weeks and rarely persist as long-term insular memory gaps. A complete loss of memory as a result of ECT is a myth. Third, I learned that no study in this field has found any evidence yet of ECT-related damage to brain tissue. On the contrary, there is ample proof of ECT-mediated increase in brain tissue. The other reassuring aspect of the treatment is that its procedure can be modified when cognitive side effects develop. Weighing these risks against the suffering caused by my current and potentially long-lasting condition, I felt more and more willing to accept the treatment. But I still wanted to know the chances of my improvement in concrete terms. The psychiatrist pointed out that, for most part, Patients with an unfavorable disease course receive ECT, but in 50 to 90% of these cases, the treatment results in a significant improvement of the condition. While this might not be perfect, it seemed somehow more desirable than changing the medication, which was the other available option. I realized that for difficult to treat depression, or acute life-threatening symptoms, ECT is the most effective option which leads to symptom improvement rather rapidly. But the chances of improvement depend on factors like episode duration and the extent of pretreatment. So it is important for patients like me to know enough about ECT ahead of time in order to be able to return to our daily lives as soon as possible. The psychiatrist's thoughtful, in-depth explanations reassured me and gave me new hope. After reading the Declaration of Consent more closely, I decided to sign it and have the ECT performed in a hospital. 
Before the first treatment, I was very nervous. The nurses took me to the recovery room where an anesthesiologist and a psychiatrist were waiting for me. A vein access was placed into my left hand. Then various cables were laid. The steps of the treatment were carefully explained to me. I received oxygen via a mask, felt drowsy, and eventually fell fast asleep. When I woke up again, it took me a moment to orient myself. Then I recognized the doctors and the nurses who were treating me. After another 20 minutes, I was taken back to the ward. I had no pain or discomfort. Over the next few hours, I participated in the ward therapies. Over time, I got used to the treatments and was no longer nervous. After six treatments in two weeks, my wife asked me if something positive had happened because she had seen me smiling again after a long time. A few days later, I noticed feeling happy when my children paid me an unexpected visit. This gave me a renewed sense of hope and courage. Little by little, I found myself being able to focus on things like food, music, or visits by the members of my family. A few weeks later, I made a trial home visit for a few hours. While there, I was reminded of the negative thoughts that had initially scared me. It took me a few months to completely get over this sense of fear. After another three weeks, and a total of 11 ECT sessions, I was discharged on an amended condition. I was lucky to go home. Before the discharge, I was forewarned that there might be a recurrence of depressive episodes. I was told that patients receiving ECT often have a rather severe course of depression due to the selected process of treatment and might have an elevated relapse risk. The possible ways to deal with such an eventuality are medication, psychotherapy, and maintenance ECT. The last option being effective in terms of avoiding a relapse associated with the abrupt discontinuation of ECT treatment. This made sense to me and I gladly accepted the option of maintenance treatments which would be terminated at increasingly longer intervals in about half a year. It's been almost three months since my discharge and I finally feel well again. I have slowly resumed working and I'm grateful to my colleagues for their patience during my long absence. I can meet my friends again and feel happy when I hear good news. I can enjoy vacations with my wonderful family. In summary, I can say that depressed patients should not give up even if the usual therapies with medication and psychotherapy fail. I feel glad to have agreed to ECT and would recommend the treatment to other patients in similar situations. At the same time, I have to confess that I've been extremely lucky. As I learned from other patients on the ward, ECT is by no means a miracle cure and, like any other medical procedure, can fail in some cases. I also found out, thanks to my interactions with other patients in the hospital, that ECT can also be used for other serious mental illnesses such as schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. A modern medical treatment for severe mental disorders, ECT helped me to overcome my depression. The treatment is scientifically recognized, highly effective, safe and has rather benign side effects considering the severity of the disorders it is used to treat. For more information, Ask your psychiatrist.